You guys, you guys, we did it. Well, I kind of did it, but we got 500 subs to this channel so far. I just want to thank you guys so much. You're such a super cool community. I couldn't ask for more cool people. I've been contacted by people from all over the world with various questions and comments, awesome tips. So far, it has been really positive. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Hey. And so, being so grateful, I still have to mention, if you felt like supporting me, you can go to supportme.battleshipcobra.com. A couple free ways that you can support me. One of those ways is to just like this video, subscribe, share it with a consultant friend. If you find any of my videos useful, go back and check. I have tons of tutorials on various things. So I've done browser access, I've done B1i, I've done other dashboard videos as well. So go back and check those and tips and tricks, queries, DTW, etc. Lots of cool stuff in there. So go back and check those and share those or go to supportme.battleshipcobra.com. Today we're going to cover how to start with dashboard design. So why? Why are you here looking at these videos? I mean, that's the first question I like to ask. Are you running your business by the seat of your pants? Are you just kind of going off of your financial statements or your P&L and just trying to make decisions day to day? Or are you really working on your business? We're going to use Crystal Dashboard Design because it can combine data from all sorts of areas into maps, into charts, into gauges, you can use tabs, etc. And this will turn all of your data from different sources into meaningful visualizations and help you on your journey to create a decision framework for your business. So the nice thing about Crystal Dashboard Design is that it uses an Excel-like interface. Well, it doesn't use an Excel-like interface. It literally has Excel built into it with a majority of the functions built in. Like you can't do macros or various things like that. But when I show you the user interface, you're going to see how familiar it is. So you basically get your data from your different sources, put it into Excel, and Crystal Dashboard Design transforms it in a really fun way into all these visualizations, into all these KPIs. And you don't need to have any sort of coding specific skills. It's drag and drop, it's fields you're familiar with, and it's very straightforward to deploy in a lot of different ways. So you don't need to be afraid, you're not building these from scratch. The visualization components use standardized components that you would want. Again, there's gauges, there's dials, there's charts, there's all sorts of cool things. You're not coding this from scratch and you can customize it very quickly. Lately, I've really started to like the Decision Speed Framework by IBM from a book called The Performance Manager. So I'm gonna show you this book up here in the corner and um, I'll probably have some B-roll of me flipping through it. It's a wonderful little book and it is just dense with information. You can use it as a desk reference and it was recommended to me by my friend James Gibbons who is all sorts of mba and ca and designationed up and a really smart guy. I checked out the book and when I started to read it, it was just straight to the point boom, 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 and it had all the information I could possibly need in order to understand and put more of a formalized framework to the way that I thought about dashboards. So the basis of this model is the decision areas and this little circular model. So you can't expect me to remember them all, so I'm just gonna read them from the book here. So um, you're gonna start out with uh, this circle, this uh, kind of nested circle, so you're going to have performance. This is the source of the data. This is what happened. Then you're going to have measuring and monitoring. This is how are we doing what happened. And obviously this is the autopsy type thing that I was talking about. Planning. So this is obviously what should you be doing? What are you going to be doing? 
and then you'll have reporting and analysis. So this is why did it happen? So these are the central rings of this decision speed framework. And then it breaks it down into the main decision areas. Finance, sales, marketing, product development, operations, customer service, IT and systems, and human resources. Okay, so those are the broad areas of the business. These are just the basic ones that they're gonna cover in a general type of manufacturing type business. Obviously, you can modify this how you want it and uh, change it for your needs. But this book, this is how it's gonna do it. And I'm just gonna cover mostly on sales because everybody can kind of understand sales. So within sales, again, I don't memorize this book. It's kind of a desk reference. So within sales, you have sales results. These are the sub areas. So within each of those areas, you're gonna have all these little sub areas. So within the sales, uh, the sales decision area, you're gonna have sales results customer and product profitability, sales tactics, sales pipeline, and sales plan variance. So each of those sub areas then have goals, metrics, and dimensions. Goals, metrics, so, so the goals, metrics, and dimensions framework is really cool because it gives you each of these, what I'm gonna be calling go meds, per the different sub areas and shows you how they link together and shows you ultimately how they link back to finance. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about some details of the sales results go meds and I'll just read them here and we can talk a little bit about them. So again, you can't expect me to remember every single one. So a goal obviously is something that's a target, something that you're working on and uh, that's easy to understand. So in the sales results section, you're gonna have goals, new customer sales, it's dollar value, sales growth, and sales order. That's a dollar value of your total orders. So obviously the goals are what you want to drive towards. Then you're gonna have your metrics. So the metrics are what support the goals and what drive you towards your goals so we're gonna have things that you can measure specifically that are gonna to drive toward the goals. So average sales per order, it's dollars. Average units per order, that's account. Credit balance, total credit, that's a dollar amount. Credit limit, that's total credit available. It's dollar value. Customers, that's your number. Lost customer count, that's a number. New customer count, new product sales. Sales order count, that's a number and number of units ordered. So these metrics, when all combined, will give you what pushes towards those goals and ultimately those goals of, say, uh, sales growth or sales order values will drive towards your profitability. They tie in there for sure. So the metrics drive the goals and they work more together. Then you're gonna talk more about your dimensions. So dimensions are how you allocate your resources. So there's a ton of them. And again, the smaller a business or when you're just starting, you don't need to go crazy on these. There are a ton of them and you could start just at the dimension of the business, but the bigger you get, the more you have to divide these and the more specific you wanna get with your departments, the more you wanted to divide these, okay? So I'm just gonna read these real quick, really quickly. Billing customer, industry group, industry group, category, customer name, customer location, region, state, province, county, postal code, zip code, fiscal week, fiscal year, quarter, month, week, market segment, market segment, micro segment, product skew, product line, brand, skew, sales channel, partner, sales channel type, sales partner, sales organization, sales region, sales territory, or organizational code, ship to location, region, state, province, country, city, postal code, slash, zip code. So these dimensions are ways of frack, you know, of breaking down your goals and metrics into something that's easier to understand or to give you some idea of, you know, is a sales employee X doing better than sales employee Y? Is this office doing better than that office? So this book kind of focuses like a larger corporate organization. Again, to, to bring it down to the small, medium size enterprise and SME, um, you want to think of maybe by sales employee, by office, by territory, by sales territory, by product line, and those can be very simple. So you wanna say, what makes sense? Do I wanna invest more in 
this particular sales employee or that particular sales employee do you want to invest more or less in this particular product line so that's kind of how you want to think of dimensions okay so here is our amazing crystal dashboard design so first you can start uh, out by seeing that it's not just like excel it is literally excel so the crazy thing is like i mean you can do all this stuff you can do formatting you can uh, you know we're going to show obviously a lot more in here but you can have all sorts of things in organized tables and calculations and everything you can have secondary workbook uh, worksheets and you can do all this stuff in here with all of your favorite tools of Excel. It used to be called Excelsius, and I can only imagine it was called Excelsius because it's based on Excel. So if you like Excel, this tool is great for you. You don't have to do a bunch of crazy stuff, coding, everything. You just literally, you're gonna get your data, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but once you have your data, you literally just lay it out in here and we're gonna get much more specific and show you some uh, cool stuff. But for now, we're just gonna do this. So this is your canvas, I guess you would call it. I made a big one there. And then I did a label field. So label one, I linked it to a cell. It's just linked to this cell. So literally all I had to do is click, click there, click okay. And then whatever is typed in here, is reflected there so you can make this a KPI you can make this something a dynamic label and that's it so the basis of Excelsius that's what it used to be called now it's called crystal dashboard design or SAP SAP crystal dashboard design I guess if you want to get uh, really specific um, you can do it that way so you have these you have your positioning so this allows you to do your positioning based on something in the system or something dynamic or just have it line up really nice and then you have some basic behavior stuff so we're going to talk about all of these things here animations effects appearances you can change all the appearances and everything this is a very simple label You have all these different themes, you have all these different colors, again, all out of the box, nothing that you need to do in terms of anything fancy or anything to do with code. Then you get to the best part of this is the pre-designed sections here. So you can see little previews and we're gonna be spending a lot of time going through these various components. We're gonna do a deep dive into these components here and talk about eh, the vast majority of them. Maybe not every single one ind individually, but maybe a few of them individually. So you have cool stuff like dials. You literally just drag that in there and you can do that. And then boom, you already have a dial. Like you just link this to a specific field and you can control inputs, behaviors, put everything the way that you want. And then your dashboard can literally be interactive doing what if analysis. It's really cool and it's really kind of fun to play with and you're gonna see that as we go. So we're gonna go through some more of these components, single value, dials, gauges. You got these big gauges here. So these gauges can just be fun. You can do them however you want. You can set alerts on them. So this will give you the ability to say if you're in the green zone, you have all those. You have vertical progress bars, horizontal. You have interaction of, uh, again, these inputs to allow you to modify things and do what if scenario analysis. Then you have all these maps. I mean, every single region of the world, practically, I bet you could probably find that. Well, that's not there. So eventually we're going to have a map of Canada that uh, lights up like a heat map. That's in the next video. And, you know, everything in here. So you can analyze by region. That's really cool. Then you have a lot of things here like uh, text inputs. These are your labels and things. In this case, I made this a dynamic one. It can just be a static label. Trend icons, art and backgrounds. I guess we missed the containers. There's the containers. So you can have tab based containers. You can have button controlled containers. You can do all sorts of panels and things layered on top. So you can have maximum amount of information, switch between different areas. You can do, gosh, spreadsheet. There's a spreadsheet view. There's a scorecard view that gives you targets and trends. You know, they have everything from spark lines in here. Where's my spark lines? 
spark lines. I really like spark lines. They give you a good little trend. I'm going to use a spark line in the next video. So that's what you have. So, you know, you have all these components. You can do your uh, by tree or by list. And again, we're going to go through those um, very soon. And um, it's, it's a really, really cool tool. I really enjoy it. Again, you can use all this data, bring it all together. I'm gonna to show you just how complex you can do. We're gonna start out with a good little example. And then with that good little example, we're gonna to move towards a more complex example. And with that more complex example, uh, we're gonna eventually build one specifically for SAP Business One, but it can be for anything. We'll do the data is the same. That's the nice thing is the data will be the same in Excel, and then you're gonna visualize it right in your data dashboard here. You can make these different sizes too. I, I happen to have this one. It's a pretty big size. Um, you can also switch it so that it's, you know, smaller components. So I can show you an example of that later too. Or you can do it full screen. And these can be published to other places too. They could be uh, published to all sorts of different places. Again, we're going to cover that. We're going to co cover inputs and we're going to cover outputs as well. So uh, there we go. So where the f do I start, Mike? I'm still confused and I don't know. Well, what you want to do is just pick a metric, pick a, pick an area. I just happened to talk about sales and I'll talk about sales area because it's uh, the sales decision area because it's something that everybody can kind of understand. But pick an area, pick a couple metrics, do a dashboard. Once you have those metrics on your dashboard in real time, you'll be able to kind of see what information you might want. So you'll say, what um, what information would help support me in understanding these metrics and then you can add that to your dashboard and continue going with that and then when you've added that to your dashboard eventually you'll be able to say okay well i'm understanding where my data is let's build some goals and keep in mind with uh, small medium enterprises smes um, you don't need a lot of dimensions so just start like with uh you know invoices Per month or invoices per week or you know invoices this week versus invoices um, per the month or invoices for this week versus or year to date versus last year year to date that one's a nice easy one too something like that something that you'd want to see um, that one's so broad it doesn't really give you enough information but in the next video we're going to talk more specifically about the different areas and the sales results sub decision area. I always say that wrong. And then you'll maybe get some more ideas in your coconut. So check out the next video. And with the next video, we're going to go through all the sales results, show some uh, more examples and get more specific. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. Remember to check out supportme.battleshipcobra.com. Check out all the rest of my videos, like, subscribe, share, notifications, etc, etc. Just keep being awesome. Stick with whatever you're working on. Don't give up. Don't get beaten by the machine. Keep trying. Keep looking. And you're always going to make it through, especially in an IT world. So thank you guys so much. Thanks to my sapiens. And have a wonderful day.